Hello ladies and gentlemen, PlayAsia supplied me with this copy of this game, so if you want to support me and the channel, use the link in the description to go and buy something, and there's also a coupon code you can use to save a couple of bucks off your order. You'll be helping me out, and hopefully you'll be buying something good. Thanks for your support, enjoy the show. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima, and I'm going to rant to you a bit about Saga Scarlet Grace Ambitions. Now... For those of you who have been following the channel for a while, that name's probably familiar to you because this game originally came out on the Vita. Exclusively. Strangely. Like, two years ago? And, wait a minute. Why does it say it came out on the 2nd of August 2018 on Steam? Was that when the PC port came out? Because that's a little bizarre. Anyway. This is basically an expanded version of the old Vita version, and it's on everything. It's on PS4, it's on Switch, I don't know if it's on Xbox One, but it's also on PC, which is where I played it. It's also on Android and iOS, if that doesn't give you an idea of what they've decided to do with some of the controls, but... Thankfully, the PC port actually seems to be fine in my point of view. I've been able to play it for a, at least the four hours that I've been playing it for without running into any real issues and they have a couple of options not much in the way of graphical options but it's a really lightweight game it still very clearly has the sort of Vita roots to it but it still looks pretty good I'll give them excuse me I'll give them credit for managing to make it look as nice as it does especially in the two-dimensional scenes the art in the background when they're talking still looks really damn Really damn well done. And when they're actually in the battles, the effects look nice, the character models are well made, the textures are a little bit weird though, and some of them kind of have that weird uncanny valley effect. Like, one of the people who are helping out the main character that I got has this real dead-eyed stare inside this suit of armor, and it's kind of freaky, but it's okay otherwise. It seems to work and look alright, despite being from a Vita game from a few years ago at this point. And the gameplay seems to be about the same as it was last time. It's the same sort of turn-based RPG battle system being supported by wandering around the map, reading some text and making a choice here or there that would hopefully affect you later on in the story. I didn't get very far into the story, so I didn't actually get to see very many of these things actually going on. I did do some things like I found a dog, I fed it, and it ran away to parts unknown. I pledged to help some ghosts find out what happened to their long-lost leader. I attacked a place that I probably shouldn't have and still somehow managed to come out of it alright. And I did a couple of other things along those lines, but none of them really came back to help me. At any point, I assume they come along later on in the story, maybe to give me a little bit of a hand, but outside of that, nothing really, nothing really happened, so I can't really comment on that side of the story. The writing is pretty standard, pretty general purpose fantasy stuff, bit of a dark edge going on for all of it. Neat tactic in that they let you pick your main character by giving you a sort of personality quiz. And after doing the personality quiz and seeing the character I got, it was pretty obvious what sent me down that path. But, well, there you go. Oddly enough, they actually give you an option to say that, Oh, I've actually already finished this person's storyline so that you can play through, assuming that it's already done. But I don't know why they give you that option at the very beginning, during a new game. Feels like something you could put on the options menu. And the options menu didn't have that much going for it. You could rebind your keys. There wasn't that much in the way of graphical options. Just a, a couple of effects that you could turn on and off. It was nothing particularly major. Uh, full screen and windowed and just a couple of other minor off the beaten path options. There were two completely different user interfaces though. One meant for touch screens and one meant for bigger monitors with mouse and keyboard support. They both work really well actually. Especially on PC where you can use the mouse to navigate to them. Like, I've played very few games where they actually use clicking left and right on the mouse wheel to go left and right in menus in the same way that you would with like the Q&E buttons. It's very irregular to see a game actually do that, so I thought it was kind of neat. I just thought I'd bring it up that running this game on PC is actually pretty decent. I'll give them that. I was also playing it on my GPD Win 2 and I was getting pretty smooth 60 frames per second frame rates the entire time, so 
yeah, it's at least well optimized. It was made on Unity, which means there was probably a good reason why it didn't come back onto the Vita, but... Well, that's just the thing, isn't it? Also, you can speed up the combat animations and the movement. Doesn't really seem to affect you in the game, except that it helps you get through things a bit faster. And I appreciate that, because the battles in this game can be a bit slow if you don't have all of that stuff turned up. But yeah, outside of wandering around, you do have the ability to go and upgrade your equipment in random towns, get some, ex get some gems from defeating monsters, which you can then invest into making the equipment better. But it's quite slow because everything costs a ton, even if you go to the specific blacksmith that does support the specific equipment you're trying to upgrade. Even then you only get like a 20% like a discount at most, so you still have to go grind for ages for currency. And yes, grinding is a thing in this game. Even when I put the difficulty down as long as I could go in order to try and, you know, actually get through it a bit more, I was still getting my ass handed to me and I still had to go grind. You do get, like, a decent... What looks like a decent amount of stuff when you grind. <coughs> There's the sneeze. While it does look like you get a decent amount of progression when you grind, like, you get anywhere between 6 to 20 HP per battle sometimes. And that sounds like a lot. Until you realize that most monsters do something like 100 extra damage on every turn. For just one of them. It's kind of annoying because you have to go and do a lot of grinding and even at like the two and a half, three hour mark, I found myself at the point where, oh, they, they want me to grind now, don't they? And yeah, that's exactly what they want you to do. Thankfully, it's not like Romancing Saga 2 where the enemies get stronger where you grind. They literally just have like little battles off to the side that you can go and endlessly replay for endless materials, experience, and things like that. But... I find that to be kind of frustrating if I'm being perfectly honest because you could easily balance the game a little better, give people a little bit more XP, well not XP, it doesn't really work that way, but give people a little more stuff towards their new moves, give people a bit more in the way of resources for their equipment, balance the game a little better so even on the easiest difficulty at least I don't have to go and grind the same endless repetitive battle over and over again. But that's how they do it. The main problem I have with this game, though, is the battles. Now, I did say that this battle system was interesting back when I first played it on the Vita, but that was mainly because I didn't understand half of the mechanics going behind it. They basically just drop you right into this game with next to no tutorial. They give you a little tips menu, which is fine, and you can go through the tips menu and be like, oh, I can, um, I, I can do this and this, and... They give you tips every time you come across like a new element that you can go read at the start of every turn, you know. So it's kind of neat that they just drop you right in and let you go. That's cool, I suppose. But at the same time, I feel like there's something about the battle system the game's not telling me. And let me show you... Well, I say not show you. I'm ranting. I don't actually record gameplay for these. But let me try and explain to you why. So the battle system, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's on a grid. Well, not grid, I should say. A line where all your characters and all the enemy characters are placed along in it and they attack in order and you can do things like knock people back back and forth on the turn order prevent them from being able to take their turn and if you destroy an enemy or if one of your characters gets downed and the queue closes up on them and it connects two teammates or two or more teammates i should say together it will do what's called a united attack which does a fair amount of damage and is, you know, it's a good idea to get as many of them as possible, especially if you can chain them together, get multiple monsters dead via United Attacks, and then just do chain, 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 everything's dead. Unfortunately, it never really turns out that way, because one thing I've noticed about this game's battle system is that it's incredibly random, and I can't seem to figure out exactly what they're going for with this battle system, so... You're fighting and you've got like three monsters on the queue, right? And you're thinking to yourself, all right, what do I need to do to try and set up my next United attack? I'm not going to be able to get it done this turn because even if I use all the points I have available to me, which slowly go up over the course of the battle, so you'll eventually be able to sling out your most powerful attacks left and right. But hint, hint, the enemies can too. So you need to try and get yours out before they get theirs out. But... You're thinking to yourself, okay, so I've got this enemy here that I want dead, and once I kill it, 
the chain will collapse onto it and then that'll be it. And then you'll be fighting away at that particular enemy and it'll be at like a third or half health and you'll be like, okay, I can get this done next turn. And then the next turn comes around and all of them are grouped together near the very beginning of the timeline and the, the layout has just completely changed because they've all decided to use different tactics which means everything you previously knew went out the window. It makes a lot of battles feel really frustrating because you don't really feel like you have a real grip on what the situation is until your turn's about to come up and then you just kind of have to deal with it in whatever way you can because sometimes the game will like put you in a really nice situation. You'll miss one attack that will prevent you from getting like a united attack that chains into another united attack and you'll find yourself being like having one really weak person surrounded by three monsters that are all going before your dudes do then they'll, they'll collapse they'll get a united attack another troop of yours will die and it just comes out of nowhere you go from having one successful turn where it's like okay i can deal with this to having another turn where you've lost half your force and it's like how the hell did that happen in one turn drives me mad if i'm being perfectly honest and there's some randomness stuff in this game that doesn't really work in this game's favour. A few things like this come up. Like, the way you unlock new techniques for your partners is by just throwing them at the enemy as much as possible. And you'll be unlocking new abilities and you'll be using them and you'll be like, Oh, some of these abilities will hopefully be very useful. Half of them aren't. Most of the abilities that I was unlocking were completely and utterly useless. Like, the first ability that I saw that I really wanted to see if it actually did anything was the, uh, I can't remember exactly what it's called, I think it's called Restoration? But it, the game basically advertised it as a heal and condition solving spell, right? For your entire party. It costs like five or six energy to cost, um, to cast. So it was a very expensive spell. You basically couldn't do anything else for the entire turn after you cast it. And then when it eventually got around to his turn again, because you have to guard spellcasters while they're casting, because it's one of those games, because god damn it, I'm never very lucky with these sorts of systems. But once he actually threw out the spell, one of my dudes was poisoned. So I was hoping, okay, I'll get like, I don't know, a quarter of my health back for each character, plus I'll get rid of the poison. I got one tenth, and it didn't get rid of the poison. Despite very clearly saying on the spell that it's a heal spell, that also gets rid of status effects. And I'm just sitting there thinking, I wasted an entire turn casting this spell for 10 health for each character. And I should point out, like, the lowest health on my team at that point was like 95. The highest was 140. And for something that didn't even hit. And this continues to be a problem. Like, there's this one ability that the uh, Archer character in my party got. Basically, the idea is it's a ranged attack, so it can't be physically counted, and it's a paralysis attack. It missed 9 out of 10 times. I used this attack 9 times, 10 times, and it only hit once. Because luck? I don't know, but it's extremely frustrating. And there's a fair few abilities that are like that too, where they have a ridiculous, ridiculously high chance to miss, and there doesn't seem to be anything you can do about it. And this is a game where one turn can make all the difference. So you end up in a position where all of your dudes are getting weakened from all sides. And you're trying to rely on attacks to hit. And it's just not doing it. And the timeline is just constantly shifting under you. So you don't have a good idea of what's next or what's coming. So you can't really build up to a new turn. Like... Think of Trails in the Sky, for example, where it has this turn system where you can see really far into the future. So you can be plotting like two, three moves ahead to make sure that your, the bonuses always fall on your turns. This game doesn't have that. It feels completely random what you're going to walk into on each turn. And it drives me mad. Alongside all of the crap like having abilities that are useless, abilities that constantly miss, and even when I put the game down on easy, I found myself really needing to grind it, and I mean really, really needing to grind it, because even with, like, getting 10 to 15 to 20 HP every battle, 
it's still random whether or not you got it. And even then, it's also still random whether or not you get any new abilities to make characters even more useful. And they have this weird system going on where if uh, you have life points for every character and it goes down by one every time they get knocked out in a fight. And then once you run out of them, you basically have to put them out of your party and run with another character for a while until that character manages to get back up. You can also swap out characters earlier on to let them regenerate their life points during each encounter. But that still results in everything feeling like a grind because you spend all this time getting your main dudes up. Then they die a couple of times and then you have to pull them out of the party, which means you get to go grind with the weaker dudes for a bit because taking the weaker dudes into major battles is just a massive pain in the neck that is... Ugh, God, it drives me mad. Drives me nuts. Drives me nuts. And I wasn't really able to notice all this in the Vita version of the game because I couldn't understand the language, so I didn't really understand what was going on. I liked the idea of the battle system, being able to uh, reorganize everyone, being able to make it so that you would get a good shot on an enemy so that you would be able to collapse it in and get a shot on another enemy. And that's another thing I want to complain about. The Unity attacks, the United attacks, pick a target at random. Just completely random. You don't get to pick who it is that gets hit by the United attack, which would really be useful because I've had more than one situation in Saga Scarlet Grace where I've hit a enemy and killed it off to the point where they've come in for a United attack with like three people and the other two are scattered. One's at like 10% health, another's at like 50 or 60% health and it's like, okay, do a United attack on this guy so that then those two can do a United at attack on the other guy but no, they picked the one at like 50% health and it lived through the attack and therefore they got to live another couple of extra turns. This didn't happen to me in a like massive battle, a battle where it really matters. But I can imagine that it absolutely would because this is me we're talking about. I have the luck of a black cat walking under a ladder. I mean, that's basically all I've got to say about it. The soundtrack's alright, but it gets repetitive after a while, especially considering how many battles you have to do. Uh, what else is there? They do give you the ability to look around the individual list of locations on a map, but they do it in this really scrolled out way, which makes it really difficult to find any particular area. And it's also kind of annoying that you can do something like, say, promise to help a ghost find out what happened to his long lost captain, but then that doesn't actually get ridden into the like quest log anywhere. They give you this one log, which is basically like a log of everything you've been doing in the main plot up to that point, but they don't give you anything for like any side quests or anything else, like the little situations you run into, like the friendly dog that you can feed or the, uh, well, just anything else really, because that's, that's pretty much it. So, it all feels just that little bit undercooked and surprisingly frustrating to play. It's a shame. I was hoping for better. I really was, especially since this is supposed to be a rebalanced version. So you think they'd rebalance it to like make it ever so slightly better? But I guess they decided not to do that. But okay. So as I said before, it's available basically everywhere. Uh, Right now, it's it says Australian thirty three dollars fifty six cents <laughs> because that that's what we, that's what they do. That's just what the prices look like here. Uh, it says twenty three ninety nine. So yeah, it'll, it'll be thirty bucks when it uh, goes off discount. But yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. I'm not enjoying it. It's mainly the battle system and how random and out of my control it feels. There are also things going on with the battle system that I didn't get too far into. Like, I don't know if there's an easier way to be able to see who's effectively strong and effectively weak against certain kinds of attacks. If there is, I didn't, I couldn't find it. And I was starting to get frustrated with that as well because it's kind of hard to tell who's strong against what. Sometimes they give you like a, well, in, even in game, they say there's supposed to be a little prompt that tells you when you're doing critical damage against any particular enemy, but for whatever reason, it just never showed up for me. So, yeah. 
I just, I, I'm not enjoying it. The battles feel too random and are overall too frustrating to me. So, I wouldn't recommend it unless it goes on like really steep discount and maybe a guide or two comes out that's like, oh, this is uh, what XYZ means. This is how you check your elemental weaknesses. So, you know, something like that to at least make the game a little bit easy to understand. But I've been playing this for four hours and it just it's just gone too frustrating for me to continue, honestly. And... I would have had to grind for like 45 minutes at the very least in order to get to a point where I'd then be able to do the video and frankly I cannot be bothered so I'll, I'll just take the rant at this point. I really do wish it was better because at least it might have made something good for the Vita. Unfortunately the Vita's probably not, not going to get this game in English at all because this is an expanded version. This is a version that has more stuff in it so they wouldn't be able to just port the English translation to the Vita version wholesale, even with the whole thing being built on Unity, making it quite easy to do that sort of thing, which again, a shame, but well, if it were me, I'd tell you to go play something a little more worth your time. This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.